Hi everyone, it's VCam Nawa. Um, I know it's been a while since I've actually made any computer videos and whatnot. Um, today I thought about just picking up the camera and doing a, a full video about my 95 Cadillac Fleetwood. Now this video is basically kind of, if you will, what to look for when buying one of these 22 year old Cadillacs. Uh, this is the last year of the Fleetwood. Um, actually 96 was the last year. Um, but the production of this model started in 93 and ended in 96 of this body style. Um, the last time you saw a video of this car in full frame like we're, we are looking at it today was in I think February of 2000 and 2014 so that was five years ago about about so I think um, and at the time the car looked like it had was neglected it looked like it had just sat in the driveway the white wall tires on it were flat and everything else and it looked like that the car had just been sitting ever since I took ownership of this car I've been trying my best to do up do the upkeep on it make sure that it's been running mechanically and making sure that it actually would be a reliable daily driver vehicle um, it has been a very good car for the past four years that I've had it um, but there have been some annoying problems and these are problems to expect with a 22 year old car if any of you are planning on buying one of these cars, I would really suggest that you do a thorough inspection. Now, some of the things I'm going to show you, the seller wouldn't really let you check for, but it's just one of those things that uh, you got to keep in mind. Now, I'm in Canada, so it's, this does not mean that every single one of these cars is bad in any way. But I'm just going to go over some of the the things that could go wrong and just things to look for. So the first thing we'll start with is uh, the air conditioning. This car had the original AC Delco compressor. The air conditioning compressor in these cars, you'll be lucky if they work. This also goes for the Buick Roadmaster, Chevy Caprice, Chevy Impala. They all have the same engine. Um, you'll be lucky if the compressor actually works and if it does work well don't get too comfortable with it because it will fail and usually the compressors always fail by not blowing cold air um, making rattling noises and whenever you shut it off it makes this grinding metal on metal sound so that's one of the things to look out for Um, next thing about these cars, if you live in a colder climate, um, you got to check the heater core. The heater core on these cars plug up very easily, and when they do, you have little to no heat coming out the vents in the winter time. I'm going to pop the hood so that way I can point out where everything is. So here's the inside of the, the engine bay. This has the LT1 350 V8. Um, one of the things to look out for is the heater core. Um, the heater core lines are right here, this one and the bottom one. They run all the way around and back in there where my finger is pointing. That's where the heater core is. Um, 
You can tell if these lines are plugged if they if one of them feels warmer and the other one feels really hot. So if the one that's warm, that's the one that's plugged. The one that's hot is the one that has coolant flowing in it. Uh, the air conditioning in this car, I had it replaced. This is a new accumulator dryer, um, compressor. Not sure if you can see it, but you can see that shiny uh, pulley gear down there. This compressor was a Reman compressor. It was not brand new by any means, and it uh, it's fairly noisy. It actually makes a lot of rattling noises, and it works, but just got to watch out if you ever decide to put money into replacing the air conditioning make sure that you actually buy a new compressor and make sure that <laughs> you hear it before driving away because I drove this car away and then I turned it on and found out that the compressor was rattling and that took it to several shops and they all say that it's not normal but the air blows cold Another thing about the air conditioning in this car is that there's a hose. You see right where that clear hose is in that zip tie? I added that because I found out that it's very common on these cars that the rubber drip line that connects directly to the firewall. Just trying to angle it. Oh, there it is. You can see right down there. You see that plastic hose plugged into the, the firewall. Those hoses tend to fall off and God knows when they fall off. They could fall off probably ever since the car was new from the factory. They could fall off even while you're driving, who knows. Mine fell off at some point this year and in the three months the water, <laughs> the water that would drip from the little port down there would run behind this foam material like that and it would sit there and it would rust out the front of the floor because I had nowhere else to go. So I went to Canadian Tire and I bought vinyl tubing which is what you see down there that clear tube and a zip tie and I ran it all the way down right there so now, when I turn the air on, the water actually goes somewhere. Whereas before, it would just sit behind the firewall or it would run down and sit in the frame. Every time I would drive the car, I'd have water pouring out of the frame because that's where the water would go. Gotta keep an eye out for that. One of those biggest uh, issues that can happen on this car. Now, you can check to see if there's water inside your car because it will happen. Um, water will form on the passenger side floor. What you do is you crouch down. <clears throat> Pull your floor mat up, grab your carpet, and you peel it back. And then there's this foam insulator right there. You have to feel it, feel it, and if it's soaking wet, that means the air conditioning has either rusted a hole through the back, or it's just spilling inside the car because the water cannot exit properly. Now you can see my horrible Bondo, fiberglass Bondo job that I did here. And I will get into this in just a moment, why I decided not to properly get this fixed. But uh, yeah, what it did was the water had sat up in here and completely rusted out the front and uh, water would just roll down and soak the fabric. And you can see 
that this material is missing. It's I took it out because it was completely waterlogged. <clears throat> so, just one of those things to check if you ever have a suspicion that your air conditioning is not draining. You might want to check the inside of your car because almost guaranteed it's going to leak in here. <clears throat> Another common problem with this car and several cars like it. The oil pan. The oil pan on these cars is located on the bottom of the engine, as they all are. But the oil pan, the front right here, sits on a cross member. So if your oil pan ever rusts out, and if you need to replace it, tough shit. You have to jack the engine up just a little bit and remove the pan that way. It's not fun, and I'm telling you, it's an expensive job. This car, I decided to have the oil pan patched because it had leaked probably about about a liter of oil every day. If I had the car parked on the road, it would leak about a liter and it was not fun. So the oil pans on the, these cars, they're almost guaranteed to rust and they rust in a very awkward to reach place, but it's easily patched in my car. So far, hasn't leaked anything. Um, yeah, there's nothing under there. I'm gonna show you <laughs> the oil spot that it left on the concrete. So this was a uh, an oil leak from my car. The oil, oil had nowhere else to go but off to the side and then start rolling down there. This is from probably sitting for about five days and it just kept dripping. So that's one of those things to look out for. Just make sure that uh, you check your oil level. And uh, if you ever see any spots underneath your car, it could be your, your oil pan rusting out. The other thing that could go too is the rocker or um, valve cover gasket. Um, you can see that this one is kind of saturated in oil. It hasn't leaked too bad, it, it's actually, I never notice a drop on the ground, but it does have a small, a small leak, but it's nothing, nothing major, so I, I don't really, I'm not really going to change that. Um, another thing too, the exhaust manifolds on these cars, this is the exhaust manifold right there, and that's the exhaust shield over top. GM used very weak bolts on these exhaust manifolds and the constant heating and cooling cycles caused the bolts to actually break off flush at the head. So if your car ever makes this ticking sound as you're driving or when you're putting the throttle on, that's the sound of air just getting through and it's making that little tick noise. Uh, the bolts typically break at the far back. Mine hasn't broken yet. You can see that bolt right there. The one beside it though, right where that elbow is, that's where it broke and it's almost impossible to get it out. You have to pretty much lift the engine up just to get to it. Um, but hell, all of them can break and it, so far I've only had one bolt break. Another thing that can go is the coolant bottle cap. After removing the cap a certain number of times and putting it back on, you may go for a drive and then when you park your car and come back to it, you may notice a puddle of coolant on the bottom of your vehicle. 
That's because these caps are plastic and like this whole thing is plastic. But the rubber gasket inside these caps, they, they're always in a closed squished position and after removing it and putting it back on several times, that seal breaks and then you have coolant just leaking out as you can see the old white coolant uh, tracks yeah it had leaked pretty badly so I replaced the cap and uh, hasn't leaked uh, the water pump which is directly below now it's difficult with this car because it has a mechanical fan which is the V4P towing package equipment the water pump is, uh, you can't really see it, but it's that thing right there. It's behind everything else. The water pump tends to leak internally. And when it leaks internally, it also will drip onto the OptiSpark distributor. And you'll have those moments where your car doesn't start, period. Well. So far, I have not had those issues, and I pray to God that I don't, because that's a really expensive job. The whole front half of the engine has to be taken apart. This all has to come out, that has to come off, um, several belts and everything have to be removed. It's an ordeal, and no one wants to go through that. And you have to use the original, the same AC Delco parts that were originally in this car. You can't put aftermarkets in because you'll expect them to fail sooner rather than later. Transmission. This car has a rebuilt transmission from Transmission and Gears. Um, back in 2004 when my grandfather was driving this car, the transmission died right at 100,000. He didn't have reverse, he didn't have three to four gears. He only had first and second, which basically is a limp home mode system <laughs> when it doesn't work. Um, so he ended up getting the transmission rebuilt and it had stronger parts and whatnot. And uh, the car now has 74,000, or I think it's 75. 75,000 K on the uh, rebuilt trans. So when you go to check these cars out, check the transmission fluid. Um, that's like the number one thing that you need to check for. Because if it is burnt and black and just has a funny smell to it, then it's almost guaranteed that it is not um, See, that's normal. It's nice and clean. It's almost as if I just had it rebuilt. A lot of people say that these uh, 4L60 transmissions can you know, handle the torque and all that stuff, but in all reality, in my personal opinion, I don't think they can. You have an LT1 engine that basically is from a Corvette with a completely different transmission. And you throw that engine in here, it holds, like, the transmission really holds that power back and I notice whenever I drive this car if I put my foot on the gas pedal it really hesitates because you know you have a powerful engine and a transmission that just aren't really working together starter motor the original starter motor went on me uh, so you'll probably need to get an original Delco starter. Don't get the aftermarket stuff because it'll only last you maybe a year or two. Um, I paid 150 bucks for a aftermarket starter and it only lasted me a year and a half and then that was it. And this was right after I had the air conditioning done. The starter decided to not work anymore. So I bought a OEM Delco starter and it's perfect. Your windshield these cars are guaranteed to leak where the windshield seals. Um, you can actually tell that someone had repaired this before because it was leaking up here and getting in. But yeah, 
This is the windshield delaminating. It's the two pieces of glass that are actually separating because water's been getting in there. And, uh, yeah. So what I did was I siliconed all the way around. You can see the silicone. So that way water couldn't go in and around and separate the glass any further. Even did it underneath because if you're driving against the rain, it could go up and around. But yeah, I siliconed around here, all the way up and around. That's some old silicone that I didn't really get off, but didn't really matter. If your car has a sunroof, oh boy. <laughs> I did a video on this about um, back in March. My uh, sunroof had leaked on this car on the passenger side rear. The hose was plugged. I had unclogged it probably about five times after that video because every time when I would drive, something would fly in and plug the hose up and I would always have to unplug it. It got so annoying that I just, I gave up and I finally glued the roof shut. A lot of newer cars nowadays, whenever you open the roof, this arm lifts up with a mesh screen. These cars don't have that. So whenever you open your sunroof, this arm comes up, but there's no mesh screen to keep anything from flying in and getting caught. And uh, yeah, so it's very typical that the roofs plug on these cars. The video five years ago, um, I had mentioned that my grandfather glued the roof shut. Now he glued the roof shut because he had a phobia that the roof would leak. It never actually leaked. It was a phobia that he had. And he did it on every car that he had. For me, I figured, well, it's just a phobia, so I unglued it and I've virtually had no problems with it until this year. And, uh, yeah, so I glued it shut. That's the way it is. Another reason why I glued the sunroof shut was because after I cleared out the the uh, passenger side drain tube, the driver's side started leaking. So I dropped the headliner on the driver's side in the rear and I found that the hose was already disconnected. To my horror, I thought, oh my God, I gotta reattach it. I couldn't do it. It turns out that this was a defect from the factory. When this car was at the assembly plant, they could not get that hose to connect properly because there's a tube that's right here and it runs all the way down kind of like in a C it runs down and then exits down on the bottom here right where that lip is the problem was that tube was barely poking out of the opening up here and the hose was not long enough to plug in to that fitting so instead they glued it and then over time that glue had felt fallen apart and left the hose just hanging there and then it just finally started to leak so yeah um, to make sure that your drains are properly working just pour water on the top and if you see it dripping from the bottom that means it's working if you don't see water dripping it means it's coming inside and rusting your car out the door seals on this car as you can see are warped and squished and just not looking right the door seals on this car will eventually let water in and that they have and rather than buying new door seals because again oil pan um, rust floor in the front and several other issues I just I thought what's the point there's no point spending money any more money on this so the water would go down and around all the way down and then it would stop and go underneath and over and water would just sit right back in there. 
and all I did was I just stuck my fingers in there and it was probably about an inch of water just sitting there. So I ended up siliconing as much as I could just any possible areas where water could get in. And uh, so far I have had no no leaks and I'm hoping that that's the end of that. Um, yeah, so here's hoping. So the driver's side door seal leaked and then the passenger rear door seal leaked. And that one was actually the worst. This one really was the icing on the cake. Same problem happening over here. The door seal is starting to let go because it's shrinking. So I had to put silicone in to fill the gap. And water would come in through here and then around and down and then also go in like that. The water had filled up so much that the that this material, this is exactly what they use. This material sits in there like that. And when the water comes down, this fabric absorbs it and then the water practically just rolls down and sits in there. And then you're <laughs> then your floor rots out. And you have no idea because the carpet actually has a rubber um, a rubber coating on it. So like it's exactly made out of the same rubber as that. So when you feel the carpet, it's dry to the touch because that rubber is blocking any moisture from penetrating it. So my passenger side rear floor has rusted out and you'll see a picture of what it looks like. Um, but yeah, so what I did on every single door of the car, front, passenger, driver side rear, and passenger side rear, I lifted the carpet up and I tore part of the material out so that way no more water would get absorbed and ruin the rest of my floors. Because this basically rusted out from the inside out, not outside in, as it typically does. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, another thing too, these cars also have a drain in the center of the floors which is glued on by a rubber rubber square. And when that glue lets go, that rubber square just kind of falls off. And whenever you drive through puddles, water will splash up and get in the car that way too. So you gotta check your drain plugs on the floor. There's two in the back, two in the front, and there's actually one or two on both sides of the seats. So you gotta check that too. Here's another good one for you. The cars like this with the vinyl top have a tendency to leak water in the most random places. This car had a leak in the back window. The <laughs> This is where it gets ridiculous, and I mean, this is ridiculous. When the water has nowhere else to go, if this draining system here gets plugged, the water has nowhere else to go, it will sit in there and it will rot out the window seal. And you'll notice if water is getting in your trunk or getting inside the car, if a little bit of condensation forms on the inside of the window. This has happened in this area, that area, and right in the middle. And water will go down, and it will go around right where there's a weak point in the seal, and it will drip inside the trunk. You'll see water just running down the wheel well. And unfortunately for me, by the time I got to this, it was too late. Uh, it, the damage was already done. Lift that up. It had rusted a hole 
right where that Bondo fiberglass shit is. And that's what happened. It soaked this carpet and the carpet stayed saturated and it basically rusted that out. Passenger side rear wheel well is fine. This one is the only one that's affected. These cars have several overlapping panels. There's one right there. Panel overlaps another panel. We got one right there. Got several going on up here. We got this one going that way. We got this one right there. Over time, when water keeps rolling down this area, it weakens the body glue that they used. Now, this car is held together with welds and it's also held together with body panel glue, as most cars are. But this one has way too much body glue. Anyway, the water basically finds its way in through one of these little overlapping panels and then drips in your trunk. I had it happen on that side. This area right around there had let go and you could see the water just sitting and dripping. Um, so you can see that <laughs> this pattern of silicone just keeps going on. This car has silicone all over it. Back window, around here, the trunk seals just in case. All the way around. Shitload of it right there. Check that out. But it works though. The silicone works, it does the job. Another area where, and this is bizarre, but I don't know how, right up in here this rocker panel and everything else some of it is held together with welds and some of it is held together with body panel glue again the body panel glue let go right up here and I drove through a big puddle and I found out that the edge of my carpet was completely saturated in water lifted this up and found out a chunk of the body panel glue was just sitting there so, grabbed my silicone and sealed it up, and so far, it has not leaked. Now you notice <laughs> that the carpets are not fully tucked in, which means I can just easily pop them out like that. This is because I have a paranoia that it will leak, and if I need to quickly check it, this is the way to do it. And you can see that huge glob of silicone that I had put in there. That's because I wanted to make sure it didn't leak. This is the area where it was leaking. The body panel glue, oops, had completely um, fallen off and it just left that huge gap and yeah. And the wires are right there conveniently to get wet. Oh, you gotta love it. You just can't win. So yeah, my carpets are basically just sitting like that, and they don't pop up at all when you get in. Like, I mean, I can get in this car no problem, put my feet down in there, and carpet wouldn't pop out. Another common problem on these GM cars of this, of this age, the power windows are notorious for falling in the doors. I have redone the back driver side rear and passenger side rear windows. Um, they have these little sliders on these rails that the window is attached to. And when the sliders break, which they always do, you have the window falling in the door and it won't go back up. I, uh, I, I've done the um, the driver's side, but I replaced the slider with a roller because that was all I had. Um, so there's actually one slider and one roller. So when I put the window down, you'll hear the noise that it makes. Yeah, it's supposed to like be quiet when it goes down. That's a combination of a roller and a slider in one thing. This one here, has a broken 
I believe has a broken slider or starting to break, or I think it's just sticking. Because when you put the window down, it makes a loud click sound. Like that. Yeah, so that one, that's going to need to be looked at very soon. But this one, it, it still works. Yeah, it's just really noisy though. So yeah, I do have a video on YouTube on how to repair the sliders. Um, and so do other people who own a Buick Roadmaster, Chevy Caprice, and Chevy Impala. It's basically the same procedure, just different ways of removing the trim. Because they're all different body panels. Another thing to watch for on these cars is these chrome cladding panels that they put all around the car. These are notorious for falling off and they most all, most likely always will. And on this one, it has happened. Um, the plastic clips broke and my grandfather ended up screwing it into the door. So the bottom just rattles. So every time when you open the door and close it, it rattles. <laughs> yeah, this panel actually flew off um, when he was going 80 kilometers down a hill and it just went woof, gone. And it has all of these dents in it from being hit by another car. But, oh well. It also, with these uh, chrome cladding panels, they also rust out the door when they're sitting on them. This car ended, or this panel ended up rusting the bottom of the door, and this is a very poor, poorly done paint touch-up that my grandfather did. You can tell the difference between where the clear coat, and this is just cheap paint that he put on there. It's not too bad. So... Yeah, it's a complete line. You can actually see the the half and half line. It's very poorly done. He didn't even feather it out. Oh well. Another thing too is that these wheel skirts tend to collect a lot of salt, snow, and sand. And they will rust out <laughs> these uh, wheel wells pretty quick. To check to see if it's rotted, just push your fingers on it and see if, it, if they go through. Another thing too, is you can take the skirt off. Like that. Once you've pulled the levers down, you can now pull on it. And you could either take it off completely or just kind of pull to see just underneath to see if it's rusted out. And on here, it's perfectly fine. There is some surface rust starting to form right at that lip there, but nothing too serious. But on this car, it was rusted out right here. The hole was about that big. I'll actually show a picture of what that looks like, but um, yeah, it's almost guaranteed to rust right in this area. It's notorious. And right here, the quarter panel, the quarter panel will start to rust out on the bottom, as you can see right there. It starts to rust. It's only rusted at the very bottom, but not on the top yet, so you got to deal with that. It's kind of a word of advice to anyone who owns one of these cars. Take good care of it and treasure it for as long as you can, because when they do let go, <laughs> you'll be a miserable son of a bitch because that's how I've been this past year. It's just, I've been so miserable just because my favorite car, not to mention my very first car, this, um, 
this was my very first car. You know, I've had four years out of it on the road, but I feel personally, and just how my mental process is, I feel that this car should have had probably another four years in it. It only has 175,756 kilometers. Now in miles, that's 109,204 miles. That really sucks when you look at it that way. Cause I mean, there are cars like this, um, with this many miles that are perfectly, are pretty well mint still. But it, it really all depends on who the previous owner was. Like, I mean, I wish that I had owned this car since new because it would be in fantastic shape. When these suckers rust, they will rust in the most bizarre places that it is unbelievable. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just making this video for anyone who has an interest in wanting to buy one of these old cars. Just to really look into it, like look thoroughly and make sure that it's not rusted. And if the car has been oil undercoated, that's a plus because this car wasn't oil undercoated. But at the time when I got it though, um, five years ago, there was virtually no rust on the floors or anything. This all just happened because water just like gets in and it will rust anything out. So let's start it up and let you guys hear it run. Most of the stuff that I have pointed out with this car are just cosmetics, really. They're just pretty well cosmetics. And a lot of them are just typical old car stuff. Nothing, nothing major. Really mechanically wise, this engine's very reliable. I find it to be very, very reliable. Rarely needs any loving care or anything like that. Um, so, this is better than the DeVille with the shitty North Star. Like, this is a better engine by far. And uh, honestly, you can expect a lot of reliability out of, the, out of these cars. You just got to make sure that they're maintained and protected from rust. Because, yeah, it's starting to rust right there too. Yep. Oh, well. And if any of you are wondering why I have these, uh, why I have this extension cord in here, I decorate my car for the holidays, Halloween, Christmas, everything. I put a, a bat on the front grill, put pumpkin lights in the back window. Um, I put a Christmas wreath on the front that lights up whenever the parking lights are turned on. Yeah, I'll show you guys some pictures of that 